But first at five, police say a homeowner shoots and kills a man who broke into the home not once, but twice. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jonathan Cooper. And I'm Lori Fulbright. News on Six's Cal Day is live with the latest on the investigation. Cal? Lori, Jonathan, the woman who lives in that home tells me the family does not want to speak out on camera over fears of retaliation. However, they say the entire experience was scary. Investigators say the man first came inside the house through an open window, stealing a safe, medication, and the keys to the family's car. The suspect came in once and presented what appeared to be a firearm and took things, including the victim's car, and then came back later. Police say while the family was on the phone with 911, the man came back, kicked in the front door, but this time, one of the homeowners shot him. They say the man tried to get back to the stolen car, but collapsed. The homeowners tell me they did not know who the guy was. Police say they later learned the man's weapon was actually a pellet gun that looked like a real firearm. TPD says the family is cooperating with the investigation, which appears to be a matter of self-defense. Kyle Alderson is a criminal defense attorney and knows Oklahoma's stand your ground law well. When you have a cooperative homeowner and you have evidence that's clearly laid out before the investigators where they can easily and quickly make that determination, then the process goes more quickly. He says home invasions are one of the best examples of how this law comes into play, protecting the homeowners from the chance of other litigation. The purpose of it was limited to homeowners, designed to make sure that those who were, in effect, defending their own castle had the protection under the law to be able to do that without fear of prosecution. And police have not yes, re yet released that man's name. Live in Tulsa, Cal Bay, Oklahoma Zone is on six.